Hi, this is Roy Jenfield, and then today we will be comparing different microphones with the Zoom F2. We'll compare the Rode NTG4 Plus, the Rode Video Micro, and the DT D3 Pro. And for the impatient ones, the Video Micro, as always, it offers great value for money with more than decent sound for the price it costs. The NTG4 Plus F2 combo is the one that I've been using lately, but I want to challenge this microphone. Long shotgun microphones inside of a non-treated room are not the best option, so let's see the different alternatives. But as a workaround, it has been working really well. And finally, the DTV3 Pro. You're gonna hear in a moment how does it sound, which in my opinion, it sounded great. And in addition to that, it can be used while being powered via the USB-C. So this might be my choice going forward after this video. But before getting into some more details, what is the point of using the F2 in this kind of setup? Well, because you can record 32-bit float with the Zoom F2, it means that in practice you can forget about the gain. Given that you're not clipping the microphone, which would mean being really, really like super loud in front of the microphone itself, you have in practice infinite dynamic range that you adjust after being recorded and you don't need to care about gain before being recorded. And when you adjust the gain afterwards, you're not introducing noise and you definitely don't get any clipping. So that's the point of using the F2. Another big point for me of why I use it in this studio setup is that I don't have to worry about the battery. It can be powered via USB-C, like right now, and then that's plugged uh, not even to a power bank, but I have it plugged to the wall outlet uh, via a phone or tablet charger. So it's iPad in the charger, but I don't think it was an original one. The next question is why these three microphones from the different microphones that I own? One thing about the Zoom F2 is that it has an input, which is a 3.5 millimeter jack, so no XLRs. It does not deliver phantom power, which means that any microphone plugged to this thing, it either needs to take care of its own power or it would not work. So the Rode Video Micro doesn't need anything other than plug-in power, which the Zoom F2 does offer. The NTG4 Plus does have a battery in itself, which is can, uh, which takes care of the phantom power and it can be charged via USB. But because of how the construction of this microphone is done, the USB connection is in the same place as the XLR, so it can't be charged or powered while being in use. Finally, the DT D3 Pro does have a USB jack in here, and that's the way that you charge the internal battery and it can be used while it's being charged. And basically what I'm doing is saving some money so that later in the year I could get the Zoom F3 and get 32-bit float with my other microphones that require phantom power. I'm especially interested on um, small condenser microphones like the EM100 or EM700 into the Zoom F3. But while waiting for that one, the Zoom F2 is offering me good value for money and helping me of getting rid of the headache of setting the gain before recording. So now let me talk a little bit about the different microphones. And while I'll talk about that particular microphone, that's the one you'll be hearing. The Rode NTG4 Plus, it's a nice shotgun microphone. It does have some extra functionalities in the form of um, filters. It does have built-in battery that takes care of the phantom power. It's excellently built and it comes with a nice pouch and a foam. I would say pretty good value for money for what it is. But of course, long shot and microphones do not perform at their best in untreated rooms where there's plenty of echoes going on. I'm curious to see what will be your opinion when comparing it to the other microphones. And of course, because it's an XLR microphone, it does require this XLR to 3.5 millimeter jack cable adapter. Next one, we have the Rode Video Micro, which is excellent value for money. It was released very many years ago, and since then it has been copied a lot of times. There's a lot of brands that do either exactly the same thing or very similar ones for actually around the same price. So the Rode, I would say, is the first one in this category and an excellent option. It doesn't require any other power than plug-in power when connecting it either to the Zoom F2 or to any camera. That's why it's an excellent option for vlogging, as in the microphone on top of the camera. 
and for that purpose if you will be doing that outdoors it does come with this that cat which is pretty good quality and actually does reject pretty well the wind i don't have it mounted now because there's no wind in here but this is a really good option so when it comes for value for money pretty decent audio quality and then this combo of the Rode Video Micro and the Zoom F2 it's an excellent option for this type of talking heads. Compared to the other two microphones it does have less output which means that you will have to increase the gain more than the NTG4 Plus. Um, the DTD3 Pro we're going to check in a moment because it has that gain up and I have it at maximum when using it with the F2. You actually need to pull it down a little bit but it doesn't really matter because of 32-bit float and mostly all this pitch is to let you know and let you listen how does the video micro sound like and by the way i do not have any treatment or any plugins or anything to the audio track so it's as it comes into the zoom f2 the only thing i've done is to adjust the level nothing else finally we have the dt v3 pro plugged into the zoom f2 now, this is also a shotgun microphone designed mostly for vlogging purposes or be mounted on top of the camera, hence the coiled short 3.5mm jack, but it can be used in many other applications as well. I think it sounds really good, actually. I don't know what's your opinion, the comparison between the D3 Pro, especially with the NTG4 Plus, since they are comparable in price, even if they do different things. And there's a couple of things that make this microphone different from the others. It does have also some um, filter like the NTG4 Plus and uh, well, the Rode Video Micro doesn't have anything really but that's to be expected at the price point. But then it has also an internal battery that can be charged via USB-C and a gain knob. Because we're recording in 32-bit float and I can just forget about the gain, I set up the gain at the maximum possible in the microphone to see how it works and it will definitely not clip the microphone because I'm just not screaming into it i don't have a jet engine into the microphone and i don't care how the file will look into the zoom f2 because i'm going to be able to pull it down in case if it looks clipped and actually now that we're here let me put side by side the three clips from the ntg4 plus video micro and the vt v3 pro before adjusting the levels so you can see the difference of input into the zoom f2 and now while we're here talking and testing the vt v3 pro let me adjust again because in a moment I'm going to share with you these three clips to have a comparison back to back of the three different microphones. One nice feature of this D3 Pro compared to the NTG4 Plus is the battery solution. I said for the NTG4 Plus, if you want to charge it, you need to unplug any XLR cable and then use the USB connection inside of the XLR connection to charge it but the D3 Pro does have a USB-C connector on the side that you can use the microphone while it's being charged or plugged to the wall. Now I don't have it because I just charged this microphone and because I'm changing them up, it doesn't quite matter. But I think that this might be my microphone going forward for using in the studio. You know what I mean? For a while, well, I don't have the Zoom F3 yet, but this is an excellent solution because I can have the Zoom F2 plugged to the wall with a USB-C cable and I can have the D3 Pro plugged to the wall with another cable, forget about the power, one less headache, one less thing to worry about when filming videos. And for me, this is what it's all about. How to make my life easier when filming videos. 32-bit float will help me. Being able to power the devices from the wall will also help me. So what do you think about the D3 Pro? So before closing, let's have a back-to-back -back comparison of the three microphones. Once more, this is the Rode NTG4 Plus. And as a summary, you cannot really go wrong with the Rode Video Micro. So this is the DT D3 Pro. So which of the three did you like the most? And which of the features of the three are the most enticing for your use case? Let me know down in the comments, and if you like this video, please like and subscribe, and we're gonna see you soon for some more content.